Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Sarah Salmon and I'm a naturopathic nutritionist and in this short webinar uh, we're going to have a quick look at the importance of the micronutrient coenzyme Q10. This is also sometimes called ubiquinone uh, but more often uh, you'll see it um, called coenzyme Q10. And although it has very similar properties to a vitamin it actually uh, and occasionally I've seen it referred to as a vitamin, actually uh, techni technically is not a vitamin. Vitamins um, can't be made in the body and coenzyme Q10 actually can be made uh, by our own bodies. It is actually very important for all sorts of things but it is shown to be particularly important for energy production in the body and is found in almost every single um, cell tissue. It's particularly important for muscle functioning, it gives energy to muscles for them to function and it has a particular affinity for heart muscles. Um, the greatest concentration, concentration of coenzyme Q10 is actually found in heart muscle in the body which gives you some, import, uh, some idea of the importance that it has for uh, the functioning of heart muscle. With uh, the right sort of nutrient intake as I um, as I said to you, we can actually make it within our own bodies, we can synthesize our, our own as it's called. Um, but that obviously means that you have to have a, a very nutrient rich diet. And for optimum health, um, there should be a circulating pool of the body in the body of somewhere in the region of about 500 milligrams a day for our body to call on and use. Now our diet gives us barely 5 milligrams a day and when I talk about diet we will actually gain some coenzyme Q10 from things like oily fish and organ meats and whole grains, none of which are particularly widely eaten um, nowadays. So um, even if you do eat that kind of a diet there isn't a lot to be gained from it. Uh, obviously as I said to you our body will put some of it um, together from uh, the nutrients that we intake from our, our own diet but there is the potential um, for a variety of reasons uh, that we won't actually get what we need every single day of this important nutrient and really um, one of the reasons for that is basically because uh, our ability, our body's ability to actually absorb um, nutrients or to absorb coenzyme Q10 and to actually then synth or self synthesize coenzyme Q10 within the body declines with age. It's one of the many downsides of aging. A lot of, a lot of things don't actually work as well as they used to as you get older as I'm sure those of you who aren't there yet will, will find out in the fullness of time. But you know in addition to this um, there are other things that affect our ability to not just absorb but also to synthesize coenzyme Q10 one of which um, very obviously is diet because if you haven't got the right diet, haven't got a nutrient rich diet, obviously your body can't make it. But also if you're in ill health this will affect your ability to make it and if you're stressed and I have to say that chronic stress is uh, a massive problem uh, nowadays in the 21st century. I know very few people who aren't suffering from stress at some level or other. So you know if we look at the fact that stress actually blocks our ability or really interferes with our, our ability to make the um, levels of coenzyme Q10 that our body requires for health, uh, then I think you can probably start to surmise out from that that uh, an awful lot of us or probably the vast majority of us in my opinion are probably very short of coenzyme Q10. And there are all sorts of medical conditions that have um, you know, the low levels of Q-enzyme 10 have been implicated in um, and there are, is a lot of research that's been done, <coughs> excuse me, there's a lot of research that's been done about some of these. Unfortunately, I mean, I'm going to go through um, what I can tell you about it in a moment but unfortunately I can't go into a huge amount of detail about all of these things because legally when we talk about nutrients and disease these days uh, we have to be extremely careful about what we say. In fact there is very little that we can say that that is in all fairness truly helpful to you um, and the reason for this is, is uh, basically um, you know legislation that says we can't make any claims for things even if there is, um, strangely enough, even if there, there, there does seem to be um, scientific studies that back it up. So forgive me you know for the lack of detail but I'll, I'll tell you what I can and then can I suggest that um, there's plenty of research that you can do through places like the internet and you can uh, pad out uh, the gaps as it were with your own research. 
Okay, let's start by looking at uh, coenzyme Q10 and statins. Um, I think this is a very big one because a lot of people are on statins. And statins are given to people um, in order to take down cholesterol levels. And statins work by blocking the enzyme in the liver that actually produces cholesterol. But unfortunately, that same enzyme also is, is needed for the production of coenzyme Q10. As I said to you just now, you know, we, make, we can make coenzyme Q10 in our bodies. So if you're taking statins, um, this enzyme will be blocked and you, you won't be making coenzyme Q10 in your body. So um, really, I think you just need to use your common sense to sort of work out what you really need to do. But all I can actually say to you, if you are taking a statin, uh, there may well be benefit to you from actually taking a coenzyme Q10 supplement. Um, a lot of the research, or the majority of the research around coenzyme Q10 is really around coenzyme Q10 and heart problems. And as I said to you, it, it, is, um, it has a particular um, sort of uh, affinity for heart muscle. Um, and I say a lot of the research um, sits around sort of heart disease and all its various uh, sort of, uh, sort of um, named diseases, as it were. So there are many, many studies that do suggest that coenzyme Q10 uh, will be helpful for all sorts of heart-related problems. As I said to you, I'm unfortunately not allowed to go into detail. But um, there has been some very interesting research which shows that therapeutic doses, which are quite large, taken within three days of a heart attack, um, have been shown to actually um, reduce some of the risk factors. So, you know, very important uh, in order to help prevent heart problems because of its affinity for heart muscle and also can be very, very helpful if you have had any problems at all. I can uh, tell you a little bit about uh, coenzyme Q10 and gum disease. Um, Unfortunately, gum disease is very, very common. Over 90%, as you can see here, over 90% of the over 65s are suffering from uh, gum disease. Uh, but in fact, you know, even with younger people, the, the figures are, are huge. There's something like about six, between 60 and 70% of the population, uh, even in young pe people in their 20s and 30s, are suffering from gum disease. Um, and you know, in the long term, it leads to massive problems because you can lose your teeth and then it, you know, all becomes uh, rather distressing. And what has been shown, or what I can say to you, is that uh, the majority of people um, who have gum disease would appear to have very low levels of coenzyme Q10 in their, in their blood. And supplementation with coenzyme Q10 would appear to improve um, symptoms of gum disease. Okay, let's look very briefly at obesity. Um, and again, I'm not allowed to make a lot of claims for this, but uh, some, obviously, there are a variety of reasons why people are obese, not least of which is people overeating. But some people do have problems with uh, losing weight uh, because they have issues that sit around the metabolism of energy in their body. And um, there is some research that is showing that coenzyme Q10 may be help, helpful with those, uh, uh, you know, for those people whose problems are linked to energy production. Chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, again, is an interesting one. A lot more people suffering from this nowadays than used to be the case. And again, research um, does suggest a relationship between levels of coenzyme Q10 in the body and the severity of symptoms. And the lower your levels of coenzyme Q10, the more severe the symptoms of chronic fatigue are. Very little I can tell you about cancer. Again, there is some very interesting research out there, but um, any... Uh, Complementary practitioner has to be very, very careful when it comes to cancer. We can um, get into a lot of trouble talking about cancer if we're not careful. So I can actually discuss very little of it with you, apart from saying that it, once again, um, research has shown that a lot of cancer sufferers have very, very low levels. And um, if you do know someone with cancer or, or cancer is an issue you're struggling with, can I suggest you actually sort of do your own research into this and start to draw your own conclusions about whether this might be helpful to you or not. Let's look very quickly at the recommended dosage for coenzyme Q10. Most practitioners are suggesting that you supplement somewhere between 30 and 90 milligrams daily. And if you're 
if you would consider yourself stressed, someone who you know sort of has stress as a, a regular part of um, their day, or who is suffering from ill health, you actually go towards the higher end of that scale. So 30 to 90 milligrams daily. Um, higher levels than this, it is it is actually uh, proving to be a very safe nutrient. Again, all the indications are it's a very very safe nutrient indeed, and much higher levels um, than the recommended daily dosage are actually taken therapeutically to help um, with uh, specific uh, problems. So it is very safe uh, and there's nothing for you to worry about in taking um, sort of doses like this at all. I hope you found um, what we've been able to tell you useful. I think, you know, even with the little bit we've been able to say, you can see that it's a very important nutrient, um, very important for energy, uh, very important uh, with seemingly for you know for the healthy functioning of the heart and so on um, I'm sorry it's not as um, information rich as I would have liked to have made it but as I say uh, there is a lot of information out there and you can actually top up uh, what we've been able to tell you but from that little bit I think you'll agree with me that um, you know uh, supplementing coenzyme Q10 for a person who is sort of uh, running the average kind of lifestyle um, of uh, uh, you know a working person in this country um, is potentially very sensible. Okay, uh, it's lovely to talk to you again, and I shall look forward to talking to you again sometime soon. Bye.